Welcome to Gare to Live. On today's episode, we will discuss the topic of healing after infidelity with our guest, Mr. Trey Walters. More from Trey after these messages from Choose Life International. 15 years ago, a spark of hope ignited in the hearts of two, Dr. Donovan and Faith Thomas. And today, Choose Life International stands as a beacon of inspiration and transformation. Celebrating 15 years of empowering lives, we've dedicated ourselves to helping people not just exist but truly live. At Choose Life International, we believe in the power of choice the choice to embrace life's journey, to overcome obstacles, and to thrive. For the past 15 years, we've been there for you, providing the support and guidance you need to break free from all limitations. Our dedicated team of mentors, counselors, and volunteers has been the driving force behind our success. Together, we have seen countless lives being transformed. We have witnessed the strength of emerges when we choose life, not just once, but every single day. Through stories of resilience, stories of triumph, and stories of change, we have learned that every life is a story worth celebrating. With Choose Life International, you're never alone on your journey. As we celebrate 15 years, we're not just looking back, but forward to the countless lives we will continue to impact. We implore you to choose life, to be a part of our mission to make the world a brighter, more vibrant place. As we look back on the years, we recognize that God has given us the opportunity to be able to touch lives. Yes, helping people live has been more than just a slogan. We can remember those days of the many people who were suicidal and have gotten help. When I met Dr. Thomas, I was, I believe, 14, around that age, and I was dealing with suicidal issues because of everything that was happening in my life at the time. But to be honest with you, I don't see CLI as therapy. I'd like to think of it as a program which helps you to live. I have seen lives change. I've seen hope restored. This is such a significant work. And I believe that what we are intending to do as we go global is going to be even more monumental. We are here for purpose. Every person, every person on the planet is here for purpose. And you may feel that you don't have any purpose, but I am here to tell you that you are born for purpose and you can live. You can choose life because there is a purpose for you to exist. And I want to encourage you to choose life. Here's to 15 years of transformation and many more to come. Welcome back. I am Freddie Zara Jackson. So Mr. Trey Walters, welcome to Gare to Live. Thank you for having me, Ms. Jackson. It's a blessing to be here. God is good. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. You have written a book on a topic that is dear to my heart because marriage is something that God has um, I guess soften my heart too because the enemy is always out to attack families. Definitely. And it has been that way since the beginning. Yes. It has been that way since the beginning. So I have made it my mission by the help of God, by the grace of God, to speak life into marriages all over the world. When I saw the topic of your book, How I Lost My Wife to a Warlock, it caught my attention. And I'm sure that it has caught a lot of persons' attention as well. Definitely. By the grace of God, I am happy that it's called How I Lost My Wife to a Warlock and not yes. How I Lost My Life because it came pretty much to that point. But also, learning how to thrive after infidelity and choosing a better spouse yes. is also what the book is about because I'm not just telling a story, but I'm trying to teach people how not to make the same mistakes and the same errors in their marriage. Yes. Yes, important. But before we get into that, I want our audience to 
know a little bit about you. So I was thinking of starting with, how did you become a Christian? I got a calling and I told God that I would never, I will never ever become a Christian. Because Christians, they act weird, they yeah. are funny. And I said, God, I will never do it. I will never join this journey that you're asking me to join. And yes. life got very difficult after that. When Before you go on, what age were you? I was about 21 at the time. Okay. Okay. So I was pretty much saying, hey, I want to live life to yes. the fullest. And then last job, last friends, last a lot. And I said, okay, God, let me just give this Christian thing a try. Yes. And that's pretty much where my journey started for me. Yes. No, at the time I was already married. So my partner was not saved mm. and did not get saved. Mm. So this is why we have to seek God first before we do anything else. Because yes. it does tamper with your destiny. Yes. So for me, unfortunately, or fortunately, going through life struggles mm -hmm. have always brought me closer to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like God has one of my, has given me the purpose in life to encourage persons to just have a relationship with God mm -hmm. and uh, to take it to another level. And a lot of times when it is that we're going through our struggles, because we don't see God right there, he's not this person in front of us, we tend to turn away from him, mm -hmm. you know. Well, the problem is we have a lot of people who are telling people about God and they don't know God. Mm. So a lot of times when God wants you to tell people about him, he will mm -hmm. first have to reveal himself to you. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why getting close to God involves so much crushing is because you have to be humble to walk with God yes. because he resists the proud. So he will allow you to go through a beating that when you come to him, you come to him humble yes. and submitted. And it sounded like you, like myself, had gone through a beating. Oh, definitely, man. I've gotten my fair shares of whooping, but God has been very faithful. And with each crushing, I've gotten closer to him. Yes, yes. So it's a win for, it's a win for me, definitely. Yes, yes. And it is this, this, the last beating I got pulled me straight to the altar, right at his feet. So yes, yes. God is good. Yes. So earlier we were talking about mentoring. And I know it's very dear to your heart. Yes. What motivated you to go into mentorship? Okay, so why I went into mentorship is because I didn't want others to suffer unnecessarily how I suffered. Mm -hmm. So when I mentor men, especially, they're very dear to my heart. Why? Because for men, they don't really have anybody to talk to. Yes. And a lot of men want to do what's right, but they don't know what to do. Yes. And the sad reality of life is if you're, if you're wanting to do the right thing will not get you the results you want of mm -hmm. doing the right thing. So I went into mentorship with the, the mission to help men, especially men who are married, because mm -hmm. a lot of men in marriages, it's failing. They don't know what to do. They're suffering. And really and truly, if I can just get in there and just help them yeah. to make a few adjustments and then it can then pour out into the relationship they're already in, then it can save their marriages from falling. Yes. So I'm just using the, the rubbles from my marriage, past yes. marriage, to yes. be the fuel for the, for the next marriage. It reminds me, there's a scripture that speaks of, you know, what it is that we go through is not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of others. Definitely. Definitely. Um, a lot of times we think it's about us when really and truly it's not. It's about God. It's what. It's about what He wants to do. It's about what He wants to use you to do. And the harsh reality is, at times God will allow one to sink that He can save a thousand. Yes. Yes. And it's an honor. It's an honor. It's yes. An honor. I have. I've always say this. For me, I just wanted a husband. I wanted, I wanted someone, I wanted to be married to a man that would accept me and see me for who I am and give me all this attention. But what I didn't realize is that I had put him first before God. Mm -hmm. And God was not happy about that. Definitely. God always wants to be number one. Mm -hmm. He's a jealous God. He always wants to be number one. And it is good to want to be married, 
But I yeah. really believe a lot of people idolize being married. Yeah. And they don't really look at the commitment, the consequences. They mm. don't really think about it. Marriage to a lot of people is like a child asking for a puppy. They just want, mm. oh, I want a puppy, mama. And you're, mm. you're trying to explain to them, you're going to have to feed this. You're going to have to care for this puppy. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to pick up after this puppy. And suddenly they're not as interested. Yes. So you don't want to idolize marriage. Sure, you should desire yes. to be married. But for the right reasons. Because yes. marriage is all about serving. Yes, yes. And if you're not healed, that's not going to end well. Right. Well, since you touch on healing, <laughs> um, tell, us, tell us about your journey with healing after infidelity because that is a big part, especially you know, in our Jamaican society to be cheated on. For us, women, it's more accepted to be mm-hmm. cheated on by our husbands as opposed to the reversal. Mm-hmm. So I know that you would have experienced a lot of heartache, shame, brokenness, unforgiveness. But tell me about your healing journey. All right. So for my healing journey, I remember asking God, I said, God, I asked you to heal this person. Yes. I asked you to save this person because at the time she was not yet saved. Yes. I said, God, I'm, I asked you to save this person. I asked you to heal this person. Yes. And the response I got was, I didn't come to heal her. I didn't come to save her. I came to heal you. I came to deliver you. And I came to make you whole. Yes. So when he needed me to be alone. Yes. He wanted to get my attention. He wanted me to be a lot of people are afraid to be isolated, but they don't understand that. So that's the only way God can get your attention to work on you. Yeah. So that's where my journey started. Just getting comfortable being alone. Yeah. That the journey to healing can be started. Because one of the things he said to me was that one of the reasons why I even chose this person mm-hmm. to marry was because I wasn't even healed. I, I chose mm-hmm. this post out of trauma. Mm-hmm. I chose this post out of brokenness. Yes. So what do what you... Of course, it's going to come with difficulties and challenges, unnecessary yes. warfare. Yes. Because I made a decision to choose someone while I was in a state of brokenness. Yes. And a lot of persons, like when you look on, oh, you know, the mother um, went through this, the daughter went through mm-hmm. this. And this is why healing is so important. Because mm-hmm. if you're not healed, then you walk around with spiritually and in the physical sense of this brokenness. Mm-hmm. And it just keep on continuing, going on and on. Yes. You see, the first chapter of the book, it's called the beginning of the end. Because guess what? <laughs> just by talking to someone and mm-hmm. seeing how damaged they are, I already know where the marriage is going. Yes. Because I've seen it before. It's like yes. looking in a mirror. And I'm like, if you are this damaged now, going into this marriage, I can guarantee I know it's going to end. If you don't change, if you don't get counseling, if you don't yes. get deliverance, if you don't get healing, yes. then we already know how this story is going to pan out. I'm not saying you're a bad person. Yes. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the state of mind you are in right now, your soul is broken. And your soul has a lot to do with the decisions that you make. It has yes. a lot to do with the food you eat, the friends you keep. Yes. And in who you decide to get married to. Yes. It's so years ago before I got married in my early 20s, I remember being at work after lunchtime mm-hmm. and I was just walking towards my desk and I heard Holy Spirit say, you don't have to have the same marriage as or marriages that you see around you, because I never had a lot of very um, good examples of persons being married and mm-hmm. and. Um, I, I heard Holy Spirit speak to me, and for me that was that was a change. That was okay, Lord, because mm-hmm. I had thought by age thirty six I would have been cheated on, mm-hmm. I would have gone through a divorce, I would have, you know, because that is what you see. Mm-hmm. So I already had bought into the lie that Satan had told me from years from as a teenager. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> it's very sad, but it's true. Mm-hmm. It's very sad, but it's true. Because, you know, if a woman is married and mm-hmm. she has a divorce, the chances of her daughter having a divorce increases. And that's it's sad to say, but it is like that. Yeah. Now, you see, one of the problems we're having is that people are trying to 
take God out of something that he created. Because God made marriage for three. Yes. Right? And people are trying to have a successful marriage without him. Yes. And for the ones that are trying to have a successful marriage, they think they have God in it, but they don't. Because wisdom is what's going to make your marriage work. Right. You can be a you can be an incredible prayer warrior and still have a horrible marriage. You know? Yes. So wisdom is what's going to tell you that hey, you need to heal, you need to grow mm-hmm. from this, you need to change this, you need to mm-hmm. do this different. Mm-hmm. I was speaking with a client the other day because he and his you know he and his wife had a disagreement. Yes. And she asked him to something she asked him to do, and he went ahead and did a million other things. And I say, hey man, listen. Yes. If your wife asked you to do this, yes. if you even go to her and say, honey, I dig the gold mine, here's gold, she's still going to be upset because you still didn't do what she asked you to do. Right. No, of course, he's a man of God. He's a good man. He's a decent man. Yes. But wisdom would say to him, hey, let me do this because this is what my wife requested and this is what's going to make her happy. Not me trying to believe, do what I believe is going to make her happy, but just right. using wisdom. So wisdom, in, wisdom is definitely needed because wisdom is what's going to tell you that you need healing, you need deliverance, and you need this and such and such on. You going on your healing journey, that you mm-hmm. you experience that you think that somebody out there needs to know. You need to learn how to love yourself. A lot of us think we love ourselves, but we don't. If you really observe, observe your patterns, because all of us have patterns. Observe, observe how you eat. Observe how you talk to yourself. Observe what you do when no one is watching. And then you will realize that you don't really love yourself as much as you think you do. And this is why a lot of us have a hard time being alone. Now, God has taken me to some places that I only could have dreamt of going. I've broken down in luxury hotels because I was so paranoid about being alone. And I said, God, this is a very nice hotel. I'm glad that you got me here. But I'm still very lonely, just here by myself. And God is saying, learn how to enjoy your own company. Learn how to love yourself. Learn how to be alone with your own thoughts and emotions. and Learn how to process them. So, first, love yourself. Allow God to love you. Because a lot of us, we feel so ashamed and guilty. We, won't, we don't love ourselves. Yet because we don't love ourselves, we won't allow God to love us. So when he even tells us good things, when he tells us of things he wants to do, we don't believe. So learn to love yourself. That's the first step. And then allow God to love you. Because once you allow God to love you, you will receive what he has for you. Amen. And, I mean, you said earlier, being isolated, Mm -hmm. a lot of um, persons in Scripture were isolated and God Mm -hmm. worked on them. Yes. And there's power in being by yourself with him. Yes. You know why a lot of people are having a hard time with relationships and marriages? Because they never took the time to be alone. Yes. So they're jumping from one failed relationship to the next to the next one that's going to fail because they believe that that person carries something that's going to make them whole. Yes. Only God can fix your soul. Only oh. God can heal your soul. Yes. And that takes time. It's not a crash test course where it happens in a week or two. It takes time for God to really heal you. Yeah. And because some, so many people don't like to be alone, they don't allow God to work on them and heal their soul. So they jump right into an relationship that is bound to fail. And this is why we have people with three failed marriages, four failed marriages. Mm-hmm. And if, they, if they've got married ten times, they would still fail because mm-hmm. they have still not yet healed and learned to deal with the trauma and all of that. There was something that you had said earlier when we were talking, mm-hmm. and it's important for persons to be healed especially those in leadership positions, those in the churches, because Mm -hmm. when God has called um, them to do a particular job, if they're not healed, you use a term, they're just going to bleed out all over. He's very sad, and God is sad at the fact that many ministers are, they're doing more harm to the body of Christ than good. You see, because they're not healed, they tend to, lash out they deal with people very harshly because they're not healed and i understand that the walk comes with a lot of betrayals but you can't let those betrayals determine how you deal with everybody else so because they have not healed because they have not been delivered they're actually doing more harm to the body of christ than good because they're bleeding over everyone 
the trending thing now is exposing, finding dirt on your brother and sister in Christ and exposing them because guess what? Your soul is so broken that you want, you want when you expose and when you put others down, you believe you're doing God a, dis, a good service to say, God, look, look what I'm doing for you. But really and truly, he's not a part of it. So it's really hurting the body of Christ with people who need healing are going out into the world proclaiming to be that you're here to heal, but you're doing more harm than good. Yeah. It's very sad. Yes. And, you know, earlier when you were talking, sometimes we are Christians and we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't um, necessarily mean that we won't go through um, a hardship or we won't go through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, you know, we, you know, we blame ourselves or we, you know, go through this pity party and everything. But in your book, you speak about ways to, 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 in terms of choosing a spouse mm -hmm. and with biblical principles. Yes. You see, I never followed the protocol that God gave me. So I can't be mad. Look, everybody wants to drive. People are more excited about driving than actually learning the road code. Yes. People are more excited about getting behind the wheels than they are of actually learning how to drive properly, taking instructions and all of that. So that's pretty much what happened with me. I didn't know the protocols. You see, even with Adam and Eve, they were pretty much blindsided by the enemy. And that's pretty much what's happening in a lot of marriages right now. They, they get blindsided and they don't know when. A lot of men will look at you and they will say, hey, my marriage is perfectly fine. But when yes. you speak to the wife, it's a total different story. Yes, yes. So... Learning the tool, learning how to use the tools, knowing what are the tools, is what's going to keep the marriage alive. And this is why we have people that are not even saved. Yes. That are married for so long. Why? Because they're still using biblical principles. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Trey, I'm so happy that you came down here and to share your story and your experiences. <laughs> um, we're almost out of time. Could you say a quick prayer? Sure. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. And I thank you, mighty God, that there is nothing too hard for you to do, mighty God. For your word says, mighty God, that by your stripes we are healed. Father, I pray that each and every one that watches this, mighty God, help them to understand, mighty God, that we are man. We are made of flesh, mighty God. We do stumble, we do fall, but nevertheless, your word says the righteous man falls seven times and gets back up at eight. So, Father, pick them up. Pick them up, mighty God. And set them straight on the straight path that you have destined for the mighty God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much for sharing your story, sharing your book with us. And I know that many lives will be changed, many families will be even restored. And um, persons can have hope after infidelity. Definitely. Um, the book has been... Um, for five days straight, it has been at number one in Christian homes and, and marriages. Congratulations. And I've not even started to release it in Jamaica as yet. I'm just talking about Amazon, people wow. in the United States and Canada. And every day a testimony comes in. So I'm just happy that God is getting the glory from it. Yes. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Trey. Thank you very much for having me. And I me. wish you all the best. Thank you very much. <laughs> We've come to the end of our discussion with Mr. Trey Walters. If you need help dealing with anything that was discussed today, please don't carry it on your own. Reach out to us at Choose Life International using the information on your screen. And we will see you on the next Scared Today. Dancing. Dancing. Dancing.